Good evening, everybody. Mr. Regler, can you hear me? Is that fine? Okay. I will be your speaker also tonight. I apologize in advance. <laughs> for people, except for the people that drank, they'll probably love it. Uh, I'm the owner of Infinity Digital. Uh, we're an agency that does digital marketing. We'll go into my video during the presentation, so I'll for you. I have an 83 Dodge Aries wagon to sell. Anybody's interested? Uh, and the sad part is that's actually my first car at 16 years old. It's my dad's old 83 Dodge Aries wagon. Um, so I'm going to pass it. How much? How much am I selling it for? I will give you $200. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> really I'm an ex Tom Noble with Fairmark Graphics, and I do customized WordPress websites. And also, I've been charged by Don to pick up a subject for our next meeting. So people start thinking about a subject for September. Randy Merle, Axios Technologies. Um, we do basically everything else with technology but websites. Um, and our website needs work, but um, to, you know, we'll, do some, we'll do some risk assessment on your, on your network. Um, we work on, on the land itself, the network, the server. Um, we talk to you about cell phones, we can help you with um, some of that. And um, that's about it. Ron Okamoto with Identity Theft. What we actually, excuse me, ID Shield, what we do is we protect your personal information. We put it on a dashboard and you're able to see and monitor abnormalities with your personal information. Ron Okamoto with ID Shield and I'm hoping to learn more about the websites that do get hacked. There's about 30,000 every day that do get hacked. So how to know how that happened. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lydia Carrood. I'm the website master for our Cruise K9 Agility Club. And I'm here just to learn more about websites and something to sell. If you have a dog that you want to become closer to, come to Cruise K9, join the club, and learn how to do agility. Hi, I'm Mike. Um, I'm like, I guess I'll say a professional marketer currently working for a mortgage company. Um, I'm here today because I like websites, like marketing, and this seems to be a good fit. Hi, I'm Phil Cunningham. I'm a real estate agent specializing in commercial, residential investment, and property management. I'm also a Montgomery County School mentor, and the whole purpose of being here tonight for me is just to learn more about websites. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Green. I am uh, the development manager for Sunshine Foundation um, with great dreams for kids who are chronically ill or seriously ill all across the U.S. Um, and I'm just here to learn more. Um, I just believe that you can never learn enough. Hello everyone, I'm Priyanka Shah. I work as a project engineer for a healthcare and research organization. Uh, but that's separate. I'm here to actually, uh, I'm, try I'm planning to venture into developing my own website. So this is more like I'm here to learn the one-on-one basics of website development. Hi, good evening. I'm Kim Hearn with Icing Smiles. It's a nonprofit that provides cakes to critically ill children. I'm the technology manager, manage a WordPress website, um, we had a development manager that built it, very much on the shoestring um, volunteer. So <laughs> that was about one year ago. So as a nonprofit, we're definitely always looking for ways to improve things with uh, minimal expenses. Good evening, uh, my name is Mike Butler from Cambridge Equity Partners. Uh, we educate uh, people uh, to learn how to invest in real estate. Uh, so what I'm selling is if uh, you don't invest in real estate already, if you want to learn how to do that uh, for passive income, please let me know. Uh, we have, on our website, we have a slew of uh, educational information, but I need to learn how to uh, put that out there in a more for, uh, better format uh, and way to do that so I can capture more information from my uh, end users. Hi, I'm Rob Call. I publish a progressive news and opinion website that reaches anywhere from 200,000 to 800,000 visitors a month. Uh, Build it with a coder. I did the architecture, user interface, algorithms, and design, uh, and had the coder implement it. And uh, 
over the years, I also started doing a radio show called Bottom Up Radio, uh, where I interview people who have a take on bottom up technologies and changes. So that can range from politicians like uh, Bernie Sanders to uh, Ariana Huffington, Jack Dorsey, who invented Twitter, Craig Newmark. Uh, folks like that, uh, with the idea that we're transitioning from the top down to a more bottom up culture. Bottom up is the way we connect online. The internet is catalyzing us to do that. And so what I what I sell is consulting on how to look at your whole big picture of your platform, how you're putting together your business online and offline, and how to integrate them together, and think about how to maximize your reach. I'm Jeff Cogshall. Um, I'm a newbie, and I just uh, want to know how WordPress uh, works uh, to, uh, as a platform for WordPress. Uh, my name is Harry Chand. Uh, it's by day. I'm a project manager in a commercial bank. I also uh, am developing and have a company called Clear Prospect. Uh, I focus on using market analytics and data analytics to help people clarify and work on developing their sales and marketing processes. So I'll clarify what to focus their sales and marketing efforts. It's clearprospect.com. My name is Cody Hostetter. I do IT and cybersecurity consulting, and I own a restaurant up in Frenchtown. I'm actually looking to buy the commercial building that it's in as well, and looking for private money. So anyone who is a commercial real estate investor, realtors, etc., come talk to me afterwards. And come talk to me if you have IT slash cybersecurity questions as well. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Rick Robold. I'm a uh, Prime America financial advisor and insurance agent. I have three websites and I'm looking for a professional who can help me or actually do it for me, drive business on the internet towards my website so I expand my business and recruit. Also, decided I have a real estate license, I've put a few homes. So, on that side of it, I'm looking for someone who has private cash and go in with me and we do a few, uh, a few homes and uh, have done maybe three or four of them so uh, anyone who's interested uh, please contact me and I do have a, a gentleman who I work with that uh, uh, specialize in rehab and homes so I have my contractors already lined up it's just getting the right investors Good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Turkanian. I'm an intellectual property and technology attorney. I'm also a software engineer for about 15 years, maybe 20 now. I don't want to say how old I am. Um, I'm here because uh, it's groups like these where really, really good ideas get spawned. And I love being in these, these groups because I'd like to hear the different ideas from people. Questions that get asked sometimes turn into uh, really great projects. So I'm just here to listen, here to see what people are thinking. So here, here to find out what it is that people are really interested in technology. Okay, crazy story. Wade Cohen, or he's New Jersey. Started out as a mechanical engineer, program manager for the Navy. 34 years, retired five years ago. I owned a coffee house from 1998 until 2009, gave it up to a partner. I was a private investor who went bankrupt. I restarted it three years ago. Somewhere in between, I became a mediator, so I'm trained with a certificate in mediation. During the last five years, <clears throat> I've been developing a concept for not just running my business, my coffee house, but also for family success using the principles of mediation. My current need is I have a website for my business that was hacked about six months ago, and the man who maintained it passed away recently, unfortunately. So I'm not sure what to do with the website because I ran out of money and also because after five years of retirement my plan was to go back to work. I'm going to start teaching September 1st. I'm going to teach Introduction to Engineering to high school students and teachers have websites so I need to figure out how to do a website for my teaching position. But more importantly when I launch the family success thing on the side or next summer or whenever I'm hoping to put together a team of people who believe in something that I believe in which is um, the ability to improve family success and uh, I have a really cool idea, and I need people uh, on this team to sort of help make it come about. And that's really why I'm here, more than anything. But I also have those other needs, so thanks for listening. Wade Cohen at Comcast.net. 
My name is Alison Hales, and I am. My name is Allison Hales. I am a pediatric occupational therapist by trade, and my company is Hands First for Learning, and I write curriculums for young children, uh, really parents and teachers, uh, for kids to develop their hand skills and language development. And I'm here really just to learn as much as I can. Hi, my name is uh, George Fagundes. I am a full-time investor, wholesaler, own a We Buy Houses franchise and uh, here at Network with other like-minded people, and we're also looking to hire a uh, marketing person. So if anybody knows someone that wants a full-time job in marketing, talk to me. Okay, so what you've heard is a very wide a set of ex expertise in this room. You've got people that have websites, people that want websites, people that have websites that need to improve their websites. We have video videographers, we have hosting companies, and uh, I, uh, hacker experts, and everybody in between. So it's quite a group. This should be an interesting uh, presentation tonight. Uh, so just to let everybody know here, so when my wife and I retired in 2013, we retired for about four hours, and because we're entrepreneurs, we decided to start a new business. And our new business is to be a to be private investors in the real estate area. So a couple people talked about needing uh, money for uh, some flipping projects. If that's of interest to you, see me before you leave today. And I'm also a proud member of Score Bucks County with some of my Score friends here, and uh, uh, Jenny and some others here uh, have been some of my clients over the over this period of time. So. And then I do this meetup for fun, because it's a lot of fun to meet with you guys once a month. So that's the story in a nutshell. Let me turn it over to Drew, who's going to spend the next however many minutes telling us about how to start a website on a shoestring. Drew, do you want to take questions at the beginning? I mean, uh, during the presentation or at the end? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Okay. Uh, Drew, it's all yours. I've already apologized, haven't I? Oh, start me. All right, great. Questions? Anytime, please. Uh, this presentation is going to be all over the place, more than likely, just because we have a lot of breadth of experience here. So some things people with experience may roll their eyes at and say, that's basic, that's great. Somebody who doesn't have experience, I hope I can help you today. We can answer your questions. And uh, please, like I said, any questions, ask at any time. Again, my name is Drew Regler, and the topic of our presentation today is... starting your website on a shoestring. Um, not everybody has a budget, obviously. Uh, so we don't believe we can figure out ways that we can learn how to build a marketable website, profitable website that does you justice. Uh, again, I'm with Infinity Digital Agency. We are uh, celebrating our one year anniversary, September 1st. This is actually my second venture on my own. I've been doing internet marketing and web design. I've been doing web design since 96, internet marketing for about the last 15 years. I've seen quite a bit. I can definitely say it's changed quite a bit. Um, we are a full service agency. We do a little bit of everything. Obviously our bread and butter in the digital marketing realm is going to be search and optimization and web design. Uh, we tend to build the website from scratch and then do the marketing afterwards. Uh, all our campaigns are unique, so we do everything from pay-per-click, social media, video as well, uh, content marketing, we do uh, e-commerce, mobile marketing, mobile apps, basically whatever it takes for the client, each individual client's unique, uh, whatever it takes to get them where they need to be, which is profitable, making money, visibility on the internet, and uh, you know, a great website. Me personally, as I said, I'm the owner and director of digital marketing. Uh, started in 96. My first agency I did was a web design agency uh, on my own in Clearwater, Florida, 2000. Uh, worked as a freelancer, owner as I said, worked in agencies large and small, clients from all across the world. And here, this is the biggest thing I can say is a lot has changed in 20 years. A lot. So in the past, people found their businesses differently. They found websites and businesses that made by websites not just uh, Newspapers, billboards, yellow pages, park benches, the uh, placemats in the diner, whatever it took for a business to get noticed, they did it. Uh, how many people actually remember most of that here? <laughs> There's businesses now that never have done yellow pages, and it's amazing to think that everybody did yellow pages. Um, word of mouth, obviously that's still the biggest thing, but we'll see how that's changed quite a bit in the advent of social media. <coughs> now, 
nowadays, the internet is how people find a business. Uh, the biggest pitfall for businesses here who don't have a website is lack of a website. More than half, 52% of the businesses nowadays don't have websites. Small businesses don't have a website. Who here thinks that's crazy? I do. Uh, it's hard to imagine that if you're sitting here and you have a website, that a majority of your competition may or may not. Drew, can you yes. say why so many still don't have a website? Right here, cost concerns in the perception <coughs> that their business didn't need a website. So cost concerns, that's why we're here. The biggest one is doing it on a budget. Most people think it's expensive. It's out, it's out of their reach, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds or tens of thousands of dollars. Or, I don't need it, I'm doing okay. I, I, go, to the, I go to the local flea market and sell my products. I, uh, you know, we have word of mouth, we, whatever it is. They don't do it. So people still- Facebook pages? Well, and, and, you know, I don't touch on that too much here, but that's it. And that's a, we actually just have one of my guys write a blog about that, about why you need more than a Facebook page. And a lot of businesses, the biggest pitfall besides lack of website is misinformation. You know, not a lot of people have the knowledge of this type of group where you can find out information, but they're given the wrong information. We were just talking about how uh, I have a client, their receptionist ex-boyfriend built the site. They were boyfriend and girlfriend when he built the site. During the course of the last few months, he became the ex-boyfriend. Uh, the site tanked, did a few bad things, and wasn't able to be updated, and a lot of different things. So they came to us. And you know, you have to go there, well, we were told this, and we were told that. Well, you were told that, because that's that's what you do, because that's what you were told. So, uh, misinformation is another key. But yes, uh, those are the biggest reasons why they don't have websites. So the internet is also how a business gets customers. Again, 70% of Americans shop online. That's 2015. We're in 2016. I guarantee this number goes up. Amazon is killing it. It has been for years because now they have warehouses everywhere. They're opening up, which is kind of funny. Amazon put Barnes & Noble out of business, and now they have retail stores doing what they did. But their business model that put them out of business was the internet shop. So people are shopping online. I can sit here right now and buy anything on my phone. I don't need internet because I've got 4 I don't. I just do everything I want. I can auto pay now at a kiosk or at a 7-Eleven. Uh, Everything's online. Everything's online. 85% of customers use the internet to find a business. So that 15% left over, and I mean this in the nicest way, is probably the older generation sign off. As, there, as the new clients come from being 10 years old to 20 years old and 80 year olds become less than 80, um, that number's going to go away. I mean, it's going to be the point where everybody is shopping. Well, I don't want to say 100%, that's just crazy, but at the very least, how many people here go to, here's, I'm going to ask two questions. How many people here go to a retail store and then buy online? Okay. How many people go online and then buy retail? Okay. So now you still use the internet either way. So regardless, you'll go there and say, well, the price on the website was this much, or I saw that. You're still shopping online. So rather, regardless you're making that purchase purchase decision there, like I said, those numbers are going to grow. Which means, obviously, you need a great website, but you don't have the budget. Uh, all right, so what exactly is a straight budget? Anybody has an idea what a website costs on average? Did you have any preconceived notions before you came in what a website was going to cost, what a website cost to develop? Yes. Average cost for a small business website between three and five thousand dollars today. Correct. I have up there between one and fifteen k on average. That is scales about. That's not specifically small business. That's a little bit everything. But he's right. Most websites quote around the three to five thousand dollar range for the start for a website. Um, your estimate with content? Are you looking at content or just everything? Uh, design, development, and hosting. Okay. That's right. He's right. That's right around the range. So. Going back to the previous slide, what people are thinking, why they don't get websites, cost. Or they, they look it up on the website, that's the cost. Many factors go into a website cost. Images, design and development. Do you need a logo design? That's going to be extra. Do you need content written? We are discussing content. Content's one of the hardest things. I can tell you the truth. Uh, we had a, uh, I won't mention it, but we had a uh, landscaper we worked with did a beautiful website and then waited seven months for content. After the seventh month, we wrote the content, sent it to him, waited two more months before he sent it back with everything crossed out, because he doesn't want content on his website. Yeah. So, uh, average content on her page, you're looking at like three to 500 words, he basically narrowed it down to one paragraph per page, because he didn't want content on his page. He just wanted his logo. Really he didn't want what? Content. He, yeah, we literally wrote 15 pages of content, and he didn't want words. He didn't want words, it wasn't what we wrote, he liked what we wrote, he just didn't want the content on it. So, he paid for that. 
images, logos, the time for development, because don't forget it goes into, you know, a lot of time for developing, customizing a theme, building a theme. So, you know, one way to eliminate those costs or keep those costs down is determining your needs, outline your plans, your goals. Do you have a business plan? Most businesses don't. They never they start the business without this key thing, a business plan. How many people start out now? I started my business without a business plan. My partner and I, we uh, we went through a couple rough months in the beginning because we were trying to, you know, we, I know what we're doing, we're doing this, as I've done this before, but everything changes. There's a lot of things to change. When do we get hire? When do you scale up? When do you scale down? Um, now, luckily, we were able to do the marketing side of it because we do some good people. Um, supposed to like that job. Uh, anyway, but that's it. Part of those plans is, are, what's your, why do you need a website? Well, I know my competition has it. That should be your number one reason. I want to make money. That's number two. You should, you know, understand what you're going to do step by step at how you're going to execute because you will have costs when we say shoestring we're not saying free there are going to be some free things in here but sweat equity is a cost are you doing the work yourself do you have the time to do it are you working in your business or on your business everybody started that analogy before we need to look and see as long as we uh and i like the ramen noodle budget everybody's been in college and eating ramen noodles and i won't lie we have a 24 pack in our office uh, uh, we, we keep the interns <laughs> uh, so the purpose of me rambling up here is going to be this. We're going to go through seven steps to setting your, starting your website on budget. We'll try to keep them pretty basic and at a you know, thousand foot level or two thousand foot level. We can get into specifics. Like I said, ask any questions you have. I, I don't want anybody leaving here with any questions in their mind. There may be some things we can talk about later afterwards that are more in depth, but again, as long as these are some of the things you're doing or some of the things you want to do, at least you'll have an idea. Okay, step one is where to start. That's the hardest part. Sure, there's books and websites and everything else about how to build a website. Do you have time? Do you have time to look at that? Do you have a good guide to figure out how to start? So hopefully we can clear that up. Uh, first, you need a business name for your website. Are you Joe's Plumbing? Joe'sPlumbing.com sounds good. Uh, not available? You're going to have to get creative. The hardest part right now is the websites. Anybody know what a speculator is as far as a website? What, what domains go? People that buy up domains and hold them and try to resell them to you for a lot more money. Um, we're Infinity Digital AC. I tried to buy Infinity Digital off somebody that doesn't count in California, doesn't use the website. Um, I did a, a Google plan, a Google, Google Earth view of their web, their house. They live in, I forget what city, but they have a big yacht park out back behind their house. I knew what they were going to quote me, and they did. They quoted me five grand if they wanted to sell the domain for it. So we're in infinitydigitalagency.com, and every client hates typing it all, all the way out. So, um, But it saved us five grand. But then have you purchased? Um, we have a new infinitydigital.agency. Uh, we did not. If you no, didn't buy it, do it when you're no, home tonight. Somebody already did. Somebody's bought every version that we wanted. Do you have a, a view on .com versus .net versus... I think I get into that in the next slide. So yeah, I do have a view on that. Um, but sometimes you have to get creative. Um, I've seen a lot of businesses that um, they use their motto as their website hero. Uh, say maybe their, their business is, you know, getsmart.com, and that's their motto. Uh, you could be doing things, uh, a poor motto, which I think I say, which is taking two words, combining them, and making a new word. If you've ever seen that, I think it's in the next slide, which we'll get into. No, I think it's okay. Okay, let's do that. So, your domain's going to be the hardest part to, to do because you want to come up with a name that's easy for people to remember, easy for people to type. Uh, and really talks about who you are. You don't want to be Smith Roofing and have to get joesplumbing.com, obviously. But uh, you can also look for registered offers from your, uh, as you're buying your domains, look for, off look for offers from your registrar, excuse me. Um, but beware, offers may be too good, and we'll get into that. I saw some parents lately. They know what I'm talking about. Um, another good thing as you're purchasing the domains is look for a reputable register. I'm sure people here have suggestions who they like. GoDaddy, Namecheap, Network Solutions, Web.com. There are others. There are others that are region sellers. Uh, Bluehost and all those guys, they also offer domain sales. This is why he's laughing, because sometimes when you buy a domain through some of these offers, when you get hosting and you get a domain, you may not actually either own your domain, or it may be really hard to transfer it out if you want to move. So don't forget, even though you're buying a domain, you're technically renting it, you just want to make sure that you're in control of it. So by, go by going to a bigger registrar, you actually have the ability to Set up your emails, set up forwarding, change your name servers, all those fun things you need to do as you're building a website. Would, would you recommend one over another? Or? You know what? Everybody's got their favorites. I like GoDaddy, only because I've used it for so long and it's just easier for me not to switch out. 
There's good, there's plus and minuses with that one too. Uh, their uh, retribution period is, is uh, eight hours, and 90 days, wherever it is. I don't like to pay that if I forget to, my domain, but they do send a lot of emails, so if I forget to renew my domain, it's my fault. And then the question .com versus .net, et cetera. .com. You ask anybody what a website is, they're going to say whatever .com. People are familiar with that. A lot of times it's not always available, that's just the reality of it. I always try to say let's go with .com first. Um, .NET stands for network. Sometimes you have a business, let's say Joe's Plumbing. Joe's Plumbing.net doesn't make sense. People aren't going to remember it. Um, you have the .co's, you have the .tv's, you have all the other extensions, the top level domains. You're going to make sure, you're going to probably have to brand it a little bit harder, make sure it's on all your marketing material because people are just going to assume something's a .com. If you have a website, yeah, it's Joe's Plumbing. Oh, my, Joe's Plumbing.com. Then they go to your competitors, you know, one town over who has the web, same website. So that is where you start, that's the hardest part. So you, I, I always, I tell people all the time, spend the most time in the beginning on this. Come up with the right website. Web.com, 93,000 people reached in 2015. Okay, how do you delete that? <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, is I, that's just one of them. I believe it, and that's the yeah. template of it. Repeat the question, please. Her question was, uh, actually it wasn't a question, I was saying, what was it, 93,000 people were breached through web.com? And I can tell you also, too, my personal network solutions, uh, they have been hacked a ton of times, too. Everyone, define breach. Breach meeting, you go to your website, all of a sudden it's selling by when it wasn't selling by in the first place. <laughs> or uh, your pages are down, or they're hacked by some Russian. Uh, can I contribute a yeah, perspective? Yeah, of course. Over the past year and a half to two years, ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Sign Names and Numbers, has opened up several hundred new top-level domains. What comes after the dot? So you now have things like dot plumbing. So instead of being joesplumbing.com, it's good if you can get it, but if you can't, you can be joes.plumbing. It does two things. It makes your name shorter, and a perfect example, we had a client that is a Penn State professor. She did training. The name of her company is Lee Ellis Group. So her website was leellisgroup.com, but she does training, so we registered Training, which is one of the new top level names, her business has exploded because now when people look at her name, they know what she does. I just picked up a guru guru because it's, again, it goes into how you're branding. If you're going to put a lot of effort into branding, you'll let people know. Right. Again, you have to go against the public perception of .com, and we're going to get there because, like you said, there's so many top level domains now. It's, you can't, you can't, you can't resist on .com. Over the next two years, it's going to go up to about 1,400. So I'm whatever sure industry or business you're in, there's going to be a top level domain just for you. I think my now, answer, kind of talk to my point, is I was trying to create an inf information network for something, sure. and when I had the opportunity to do my thing, dot .info, it was like, duh, why wouldn't I do that? Yeah, so, and that's it, you know, if you're branding it, you, if you're, the best way is, and this goes back to part of what we were saying, there's such a huge component of people that just build a website, that's it. They don't market, they don't do anything else. They can do a dot .com. If you're trying to build a true brand, whether you have a, like your website you mentioned, you do, you do net radio and whatnot, so you're your brand as much as your website and as your radio. So you're building that, you're continually pushing that out, you're looking for something that's unique to stand out. If you're strong in that, then you can push a dot .guru or a dot .plumbing, or I know there's so many things, right? And the nice thing is those are really focused on the industries, so you are getting specific. Like if somebody doesn't remember Joe.plumbing, then, you know, it makes it much easier. My favorite is dot what WTF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so about 10, 20 years ago, dot .com was more important. It was more important, because that's, yeah, that was really what it was. But now, if you're expecting to be online and have people find you online, it's not as important. If you're going to have right. a billboard, or you're going to give out cards, or do a radio ad, dot .com is more important, because people are going to have the reflex. What's the name? No, it's going to be dot .com afterwards. Sure. If you're not going to do that, then it's not as important that you have more flexibility. Yeah, exactly. Another question? <coughs> All right, so we know I also we're not going to use name web.com or network. Uh, talk about the idea. <laughs> talk about the idea of getting multiple domains that might be various. Spells. Actually, that's a great that's a great point. That's something and I wanted to clear. So read the rest. You have to think about the longevity of your Good. domain. It actually has another point that I just thought of too. So if you are joesplumbing.com, it's a very common name, but you get it. Uh, well, what you should do is look at making sure you, if you're trying to secure your brand and build your brand, you want to go acquire the .net, the .org, every version that you can get. 
because you don't want somebody coming in purchasing up another domain that's very similar to yours or exactly yours, just with a different TLD extension. Um, another thing too is you do want to purchase your domains for a long time. Uh, you don't want to just buy it for a year. A lot of people do that, like, oh, I'll buy it for a year because it's cheap. I don't want to spend. This goes back into yes, you're buying on a shoestring, but where you shouldn't skip. I recommend at least five years to purchase your domain for. Is it true that the longer you buy the domain for, the better you're going to um, show up in the search? Yes. Is it true? is a factor. Yes, Among the 200 absolutely. plus factors that go into it, it actually is. Because here's the thing the rationale with Google is. If you're a customer of any business, just think of a business. Let's think of Bertucci's. The next store I open up, I'll use Joe's Pizza. Let's just use Joe. Did you name your name Joe? You got a popular name today. Um, I just opened up. Why should I take all the customers? Okay. I only signed a year lease. They've got a 20 year lease here. I know this place isn't going out. It's big J. Da, da, da. Over there, there's one guy with a six month lease. Let's say he's barely making any business. Why should I trust him? Well, in the search engine, it goes with many other SEO factors, but one of those is going to be. You have a domain you've registered for one year. Why should I present you as Google's businesses as a customer, or as a, you know your result? Why should I give my customers, which are searchers, your result? Because now I've done it, and you've gone out of business in three to six months. Your your website's gone after that. Um, a lot of spammy websites do the same thing. They just for do sure. one year. They spin it. So you want to look like you're there for you know you're there for a good. I think I heard long haul. That's what yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. So you can do up to ten years. I always say do at least five years. Okay. Five. It's worth it. It's, it's one of the money you want to invest. You don't want to just if you're speculating and just buying it. You're, you're, you know, you bought your main website. You're trying to buy a secondary website to see what you want to do with it. Fine, do it for a year, three years. The minimum, the minimum I do it for a client if they can play is three years. I try to get them all for five years. And there's enough coupons if you go to Retail Me Not and all these other sources that you can get coupons when you buy domains. And, and talk about misspelled domains. Sure. Uh, and actually, even better, Verizon.com. Everybody knows Verizon. Anybody here hate Verizon? <laughs> right. So if you go to VerizonSucks.com, guess who owns that? Verizon. 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 Verizon's one of those companies that has bought every domain at Walmart as well. Um, any domain that's negative about that, also the positive ones, and also misspellings. Uh, they were controlling their brand. No one's going to go and start, a, and there actually was a story about three years ago where somebody found uh, a domain that they didn't get and built up a site that was Verizon sucks, something to that effect. And that's it. You don't. You, there's enough bad ways to go to a business and, and do damage. Uh, Yelp, the Internet Mafia, Yelp. Um, we'll, we'll get into that another day. But anyway, uh, there's enough damage you can do. So to having having your your brand that you have worked so hard to build, you put your money, your sweat equity in, and have somebody come in and start a spoof site or or, or something negative is you know. And again, it's part of them when you're trying to keep things cheap. As you're expanding and you're reinvesting, those are things to make sure you look into. Um, again, still need help naming your site. There actually are sites that are available to help you name your site. Uh, these are examples. I have used them in the past, long time ago. Uh, name Mesh, Padme, Name Boy, or the portmanteaus, like I said, Smoke Plus Bob equals Smog. You can think of two things in your words that are about our best. So it's come up with name. These will also show you if the domain's available. So it'll come up with names that are available within, you know, you put in Joe's Plumbing, Bucks County, whatever it is, it'll try to find a word for you. Um, you can look at your services, but again, asking around, we'll make sure you're always typing in the search bar, different variations, going to GoDaddy or not network solutions or web.com. Um, and shorter domains are usually the best. And that's just the truth. People, the attention span nowadays, anybody know the average time it takes before somebody stays on a site? So you have three seconds for your site to load and somebody whether they decide to bounce, which is leave, or stay and engage. So you're looking at, if I have a website that is Joe's Pizza in BucksCountyPA.com, I'm going to Purdue just <laughs> And I'm not just trying to get free food for this. Uh, so yeah, shorter the better. And again, it's going to be hard because the internet's been around for like three years now, I think. Um, so it's, there, a lot of things have been done now. But yeah, uh, anybody know the first first name of the uh, first website? Symbolics.com. It's not what you thought. It's some company that bought their first domain. Um, that was uh, what thirty years ago. So a lot of the names have been bought, whether they're by companies or they're by speculators. So it is hard, but that is where you need to spend the most time. Definitely by far. The other side, though, is that one of the important factors in search engine optimization is the name to the URL. So if you have Bucks County Pizza, then you're they actually have done away with that. 
Google just announced now that anything before, before the last forward slash, the trailing forward slash, doesn't matter to them. That was exact, they actually do have a penalty because the exact match penalty. So you had exact, you had these exact match domains. So like you say in buckscountyplumbing.com, you ever notice now you see every business is named after the city they're in? So it's like instead of being Joe's Plumbing, it's now Philadelphia Plumbing, you know, Feasterville Plumbing. They named their business that, that's their website. Because you did get a kick for that, that was what it was. And you would name your pages accordingly. Google caught on to that like they do everything, it takes time. But they actually have finally caught about that. And they just released uh, recently, within the last two or three weeks, that they said specifically, I think it was on mods, it might have been on search engine land, um, anything after the, that last trailing, so before that, so HTTP, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't take it over. But it used to, definitely. Um, so now it's more important to be your naming conventions on your page. So if it's Feast of Real Plumbing after the joesplumbing.com, that means a lot. That helps your search engine. Um, all right, here. Somebody does hosting here. So you've got a domain. Anybody know? Anybody doesn't know what hosting is before I get there? I don't. Okay. So you have a website. You need to put it somewhere so people can see it. Now you can't put it on your home computer because you don't have enough bandwidth. So you have a company that hosts your files for your website. So when you go to a website, they're hosted on a server. Deliver to this person through their web client, they see it. So, all those files are going to be somewhere. So, hosting is important. Um, it's like the landlord for your website. There you go. <laughs> hosting is the biggest thing that people cheap out on, too. And I, I mean in a nice way because it's they're not important. They see all these 199s and free for three months, free domain. So, you have to wait cost first features. Um, cheaper isn't always best. Uh, going back to what I said, you get a free domain with that. That sounds great. I just saved $8, but then I don't have control of my domain when I leave. Um, things you think about when you're getting hosting is obviously where your server is located, um, the closer your server is to your business, the better off you are, uh, the type of hosting you're hosted on. So there's, I won't get into specifics, but if you want them, I can answer them. There's dedicated servers, there's virtual servers, there's shared servers where everybody lines up on the same server under IP, but they're set up under a different, their, their own site. So let's say everybody's on one server and this guy and this guy are real busy, you slow down. You don't have enough bandwidth, so if your site's getting a lot of hits, you can crash and not show up. So, even though it may seem inexpensive at the time and like a good deal, you know, cheap hosting isn't always the best. You have to have the research. Do you have options? Do you have enough bandwidth? Is there support? Options like, can I add in an SSL, can I, which is a secure certificate? Can I add more memory? Can I add more, if I get more bits, can I, am I able to up my, uh, my plan? Do you have enough bandwidth? How many people do you anticipate coming to your website? Have you done enough research that you know what your competitors are getting? Are you getting 10 people a day? Are you getting 10,000 people a day? Things you need to know before you go into that so you know what kind of hosting. If you get on a hosting, you know you're getting 10,000 hits a day, but you're on a $1.99 basic hosting and your site crashes, most of those people are going to leave because they're going to come to a site that's down. So at that point, you've just wasted all that. You, where you thought you've wasted money, now you've just lost it. And that's really going to be the key to most of this presentation is you'll see where you think you might save money actually cost you in the long run. Do we have any other questions about hosting? Any you want to add in since you're specific? No, you're, you're doing great. Perfect. All right, so we'll go to step two, going with the free site. Free's good, right? Everybody loves free? Yes, everybody's dinner's free today. Thank you, Bertucci. <laughs> uh, now they don't like you. Um, so yes, there are free options. Take that as a, with a caveat. Um, there are advantages to a free website. Of course, it's free. It's cost. There's no, nothing there. We're trying to keep everything in a shoestring. We now have just paid, uh, let's say, twelve ninety nine times five for our domain. We now just paid fifteen dollars a month for our hosting. We paid all up front for the year to save a little bit. Uh, now I gotta, now I gotta buy or build the website. So what do I do? Well. I can get some of these free website builders that actually will include the hosting and a domain and all that. So there's there's some you know fun things with it. It's easy to use. There's no coding knowledge required. Um, they have a lot of these drag and drop interfaces where no coding. Like I said, you literally say, oh, I want to add a title. I want to add text. I want to add a picture. Drag it, click on it, fill it in. You build online. You don't need custom software. Anybody you still, I heard Dreamweaver. Anybody still use Dreamweaver here? Quite a bit, I do. Um, I had to license that software thing. It's sweet. It's now like two grand or something that we pay for. Um, so yeah, I just pay my fee and I get all that too. So it seems great. Obviously, free isn't always great. There are some limitations to them. So 
So disadvantages, cost is a disadvantage. You get what you pay for. You can be very limited what you do. You are using a platform on a proprietary software. Um, they own the files. They own everything you have. The content's yours, but if you want to say, you know what, I started on Wix, they're great, we and go down here, I build my site, I got a site up, that's great. Because I, I, and I, and I may go against the WordPress lovers here, but if you come up to me and say, I don't have a website, I have no money, you have a site here if I go in there. So it's not that bad of an option. It's better than not, better than being that 52% of people who don't have a website. But if you go into it thinking I'm going to expand someday, like I said, you don't own the files. Now I'm ready to go, I want to move my files, I want to start doing SEO, I want to do blogging, all this fun stuff. Let me put my, my server files down and move them through to the next server. Can't do that. You're also going to have limited access to other things, any kind of customization. They're going to have templates. If you don't like certain things on the template, you're stuck with that template. You really have changes to the style. You're not going to have too many plugins that are unique, that may benefit your site. You can only do certain SEO enhancements. There's a lot of SEO stuff. Like I said, there's 200 plus things that we do to a website. Every client that comes into us, we have a five-page checklist that we do for each site that comes in. There's multiple things on that site. Check this, check that, check this, check that. That's before we start doing SEO. A lot of those things, when I see a Wix site, and I'm, I'm sorry for laughing, but when I see a Wix or Weebly site come in, we already know. It's almost like, not done, not done, not done. That's misinformation. They didn't know, but they had something. We just try to steer them the right way. But again, it's free. It's a start. It's better than nothing. But there are small budget options. Question? Yeah. So I know I just spent a lot of time on free because this is a WordPress group. I know I have Drupal and Magento logos and Joomla logos up there. So I will mention them. But I am a fan of WordPress. I love WordPress. I was a big proponent of it in its infancy. I moved from Dreamweaver to WordPress just for the fact that I could do what I wanted. I could do a lot of things I wanted. And you know, as we get into it, I'll just go through this first and I'll get back to my point here. So you have WordPress hosting, you have different Joomla, Drupal, Magento if you're e-commerce. These are what's called content management systems, or CMSs. Um, what that means is that I basically get a system that creates my pages, manages my pages in a database. I have a theme or a template, which we'll get into, that wraps around my site. So if I need to create a page, anybody here fill out a form online? I'm sure everybody has. You ever have put your name and your message in there? It's almost that easy to create a page. Once you have your theme and your template styled and installed, you need to just name your page. So with this content management system, your template's there, you just have to fill out the content and add it. It manages it, you can do so many great things to it. Everybody knows here with plugins, with security, with updates. Um, it's really your better way to go for managing your files and really scaling your website. If you are doing bigger websites, Drupal is an option. I still like WordPress at a big level, but that's me. I'm sure there's people here that will fight me on big sites. Um, and it is very easy to use. Very little coding is needed. Uh, and we'll get into why that is. And nice thing is, too, if you're on a hosting plan, let's say I use A2, I've used Bluehost, there's HostGator, there's all these different hosts out there. A lot of them have what's called an auto install. So you don't have to go in and create the files on the server and do all the configurations. You say WordPress, check, it installs it, you're ready to go. You literally have a website. You have a very bare bones blog website. But once you get into the templates and themes, which we'll get into in the next section, you will have a beautiful website. So WordPress is also free. It's open source free. So if you're paying for your hosting, and like I said, most of them will have the WordPress option in their built-in, you'll be able to install that for free. So that $10 hosting, you now I have WordPress as a nice content management system. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, other options for getting your website built. Craigslist, be careful. Um, so I was on this date, okay. Uh, Craigslist, uh, there are people, I, I actually helped teach a guy who was doing websites on Craigslist uh, four years ago. He bought a membership to um, a site called Elegant Themes, which we'll get into. Uh, it's a template site. He basically purchased one theme and built the same site over and over again for 500 bucks. He knew no coding. He knew nothing other than the backend panel. People were happy because they had a website. And it was on WordPress, and they were they were happy. But whenever they need changes, he couldn't do them. He didn't know coding. He didn't know anything to do. So you are you could get somebody that's going to be really good may not be on there. You may get beginners. You may get scam artists. It's an option. I don't recommend it, but it's there. Um, there's sites like 99designs and Thumbtack. Anybody ever hear of Thumbtack? It's relatively new. Um, 
it's basically like you put in your your uh, your parameters for what you're looking for, and then it's emailed out to different people, and then like we we get an email. Somebody's looking for web design. Here's their parameters. You can then put your name in the hat. This works. So you can sit there and say, I have a website. I need ten page website. My budget's fifteen hundred bucks or five hundred, whatever it is. Somebody may take off on the offer. You may get somebody good. Freelancers, there's templates and themes which we'll get into. Outsourcing, sources, sites like Up, Upwork, and if you're not familiar with Upwork, it was Odesk or Elance in the past. Um, I have used those in the past when I was in a pitch. Good and bad. Sometimes it's overseas, sometimes it's over here. Uh, sometimes the cost is nothing, sometimes it's expensive. I've had it where I've needed development work done, it was done in a half hour, and it was done for 20 bucks, uh, where I would have paid somebody much more here for a lot longer time. So there are benefits to it. Somebody who can get you a nice website, nice design, nice development work for inexpensive, and then <coughs> they disappear. Who had somebody disappear? Somebody died up here. Somebody the website? Okay. Uh, that's oh, the first thing. I did it for 20 years. He did the website for 20 years? Okay, so I thought it wasn't like he just did it two years ago. No, 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 no. Maintain it. He's going to be on the investigation discovery next week on that. So <laughs> the, the thing is, you know, unless you know where you're working, work with a company or a family friend or, uh, you know, uh, your cousin or your nephew who does web designs, you really got to be safe, sure who you're working with and if you ever need updates or changes, you're able to get them. Which goes back into why WordPress is great because you can make a lot of changes. So online builders versus paid options. I've mentioned and got a lot of decent points here that there's benefits and disadvantages to each. It just needs to be where you feel like you're comfortable. Are you... You know, you're brand new. You're like, I have this idea, I just got laid off, I want to start a business, I know a little bit of work, I, but I have no money, I've got to pay the bills, I've got kids, I've got a wife who's yelling at me. You know what, get a free website, just get something. Start putting your business out. Get a website, put that web address on every business card poster, write it on the, in chalk on the side of your car if you have to. Go promote it, that's what you're doing, that you want to succeed. But at least you get something. But if you're truly, really to invest the long term, there's the paid option and definitely WordPress. We're at the word. And I, I love Drupal when I'm at the Drupal group. I'm just kidding. There's no such thing. There probably is. But no, uh, again, we build all our websites in WordPress. We convert all our sites to WordPress if they're not. Um, so what I say is like it's better to better have something than nothing, but if you do have a choice, I think you can tell we're all we're all WordPress here. So the beauty about WordPress as I was a question. Yeah, I comment if I could. Um, oh, just bad. as a basis for comparison, no. Uh, WordPress, as of the end of 2015, WordPress powers 25% of all websites in the world. That's crazy. Okay? Uh, as a basis for, for comparison, uh, Joomla and Drupal, its two nearest competitors combined, have about 7% market share. Okay. So you can see that the reason people adopt things is because of basically the first is going to be cost, well, this is free, so that's the other one. The second would be ease of use. And I think WordPress is so much more easy to use. Head and shoulders above uh, anybody. Yeah, especially if you get into like Magento, Joomla. Mm -hmm. I've been in Joomla since 1.3. Joomla is a great developer tool. It is, but that's why, because it was created by developers to be understood by developers. Um, and we'll get into that argument: developers versus designers, and a lot another day, another entire day. <laughs> yeah. um, so we talked about themes. Uh, there's a few different choices, and we're going to go through the difference between using a free theme and using a premium theme. Mm -hmm. So uh, thumbs up. Free themes are free. There's no cost. It's a word we've used a few times here. Um, I've got a theme. Somebody already designed it, laid it out. So I'm saving time. I'm using this theme. It's free. It's somebody already created it. I can just jump right in, enter my info, and go. And some look pretty professional. There's a lot of decent ones out there that you can find that you know they're 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 not bad. People have put them in there. There's a lot of people that are starting off. They're throwing it out there to you know get their work out there. And you can get something. So this goes back to you paid your hosting. You paid your ten dollars. Auto install WordPress for free, and I can get a free theme. That's pretty great. My costs are going down. Okay. Of course, there's disadvantages. And that actually is a different hand. Not the other hand just rotated 180 degrees. Um, most of the time, there's no support. Something happens when you call. You don't know how to code. That's why you use the WordPress and a free theme. I don't know what to do. I'm a I'm a SOL. Could be buggy. Not well coded. Again, they're free. They they're and it happens. Um, they could be buggy, they could have code that's something you try adding a photo and all of a sudden the header breaks. Um, it happens quite often. And there could also be limitations of the functions of what you can do. And we'll get into some of that with the uh, premium things that they have, these back-end panels. WordPress also updates quite often. It's one of the best things about WordPress is um, being open community. 
a lot of the updates come out. People work on it for security patches and whatnot. I think what's it up to four, five, one? Four, four, five, one, three currently. Yeah. So I remember, you know, I, I've seen sites. I, I get a, I had a client the other day it was WordPress three one still, and it was bad. But the nice thing is, uh, the bad thing is, if you have a site again as these changes come up, it may break as you update to the most secure version of WordPress. It happens quite often. Okay. We're talking about a plugin as we get into the plugin section. We had a very simple plugin, but it was enough that once WordPress updated, broke. I think 4.6 is scheduled to be released later this week. Is it? Is it this week? Uh, it was originally the 19th. I don't know if it's still on target. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know we're we try to we try to auto update some, but then we back them up. We have backups on. All right, so I'm going to go to first. So I tell you the advantages of premium themes. I'm going to give you the disadvantages because I'm going to tell you why I like them better. Um, cost. There is one, obviously. Some can be expensive. Now, expensive to be could be cheap to you and cheap to me could be expensive to you so you have to determine that but there is going to be a cost in premium themes um, and there is going to be a potential for similar items so it, you know if you're buying a premium theme you're paying say 60 bucks for it and the site disappears the whoever's selling that theme the, they don't update the theme to the newest version of the website you could have similar issues with your security with your site breaking so it's not always going to be the best option but what do you get with premium themes there's a thumb again uh, it's always going to be cheaper than a developer and a designer. I mean, you're literally going to get a great theme. Uh, the average going rate is forty-nine to fifty-nine dollars for themes, give or take. Let's just say that with that range. Uh, that's about what you're going to pay a developer per hour, say fifty dollars per hour, easily. Uh, so now you got a theme that you can go online and purchase, download, upload all in the span of five minutes, and look great. And start configuring it, and be up in thirty minutes. Um, and time, you don't have to wait. Again, the same thing, jump in and your info and go. Very professional looks. These sites are designed to look, to have the right features, menus, galleries, sliders, uh, call to action areas up the top where you have your phone number. They're built to sell, they're built, they're built to be premium because that's what they're showing off. They're easy to use developer panels in the back end. So instead of, you know, you have your logo, you have your codes for your Google Analytics, you have all these other things, where do I go to? I don't know how to code. A lot of these nowadays have developer panels in the back, so you can go there and it says, upload logo here, put site title here, put this here, that here, rent the logo for our iPad. Like you can do all these different custom features in the back end, change your colors. I can, I can literally say, here's what I want the color of the header, here's what I want the color of the text, here's the font I want. All through nice easy drop down menus. They're pretty awesome, I, I won't lie to you, like you guys, you don't know what you're doing. I, I've used Wix and I've been very happy with it. But if you can match the functionality of Wix, but with the uh, scalability and advanced of WordPress, it's you would you would just be able to. What I don't it. what I don't like about it is the uh, the integration into the mobile, like the website sure. desktop is good. Yeah. The web or the mobile, I'm not happy with. I and I'll tell you uh, one thing that's not on here is, and I'll, I'll show you the source I like. Um, but I'm going to say that a large, large percentage are already going to be mobile ready. They're going to have a great. I don't want to say responsive because they're going to have multiple views. So you're going to have a unique view for your mobile for, of different sizes for your tablets of different portrait and landscape as well as your um, your desktops. So you're getting unique in the CSS the coding to style to the user agent that you're, that's viewing it. You, yeah, with Weebly and all those, you may not get as much of that. You may just get one mobile, one. Yeah. Easy to use developer panels on the back end are not normally there for the free. No, not usually. And if they are, there's a, there's what's called free to premium. There are some that are free for the very basic set of features, but if you want to use all the features of the theme, then you have to upgrade it. There are some, yeah. and again, you have to look at quite a few, but uh, there are some that are, rather than a theme, they call it a theme framework. It has more options, more controls. Uh, WordPress.org is the repository for all the free WordPress software. No, I, I and a, they do have a five-star rating system, so you can see how many installs there are. If you see one that has one install and one review and it's not a very good one, I would stay away from it. If you see one that has uh, 30,000 active uh, sites and it has a five-star rating, it's probably okay. I, I found a theme I like for my hacked website, and I have the choice of getting it for free or paying $30, sure. yeah. and I just want to know what the difference is before I buy it. And that's it should tell you there should be some sort of help file with that or a link to the menu, the file with the developer that says the additional features. Sometimes it, it may not tell you unless you look it up. Sometimes you'll just see them grayed out. but. The, the basic features for, for a free thing would be where to upload the logo, maybe some other graphics, maybe change some of the colors. Uh, 
most of them won't have uh, the uniqueness or at least the uh, ability to change multiple colors, multiple functions. Okay. I want to talk about support relative to free versus paid. We'll get to that, sir. <laughs> um, one of the sources that I'll talk about, what, what this gentleman in the back just said, is uh, many offer the updates and support. And that's the key. Going back to the WordPress update, the, the, the site that I'll mention in the next slide that I like, every time WordPress is updated, the theme is updated. I don't pay extra for that. I've already bought the theme. They're giving me the updates. So I know this isn't going to crash or break because it says it's compliant from WordPress 3.5 up to 4.5. I'm good. If I have questions, I, I, most, and a lot of them in the one I mentioned to you, they actually have a support help desk, support forums, you can go into and ask questions. So if you don't know something, you literally just have to go there, ask the right questions, and a lot of them will actually do the work for you. If it's their theme and it's something that's really wrong in their theme, they'll fix it and do it for you. They'll, get you, they'll, give, you, they'll give them the logins and they'll fix it. So premium, I can tell you, you can buy a $59 theme, you'll get free updates, the support for free, you'll get amazing, generally better than the free themes, much better look. It's pretty hard to, to not consider that. So where do you get themes? Um, you may have heard this one, WordPress.org. It doesn't work, but it is. Um, it is, WordPress.org is where you're gonna find most of your, all your free things. There are other paid ones in there too, but as Hal said, um, it's inside the theme panel. They're usually free or free with premium options. Um, you can Google free WordPress themes. I know it sounds ridiculous, but there's a reason some of those sites rank is because they're pretty good, so you can go in there and check those out. Be wary. I mean, if you look at the site and it doesn't look good as on its own, they're probably not selling good themes. But if the site's decent, then you're, you're pretty good. Some other premium sites, Template Monster, Elegant Themes, Rocket Themes, Themeify. iThemes. iThemes. There's a lot of them out there. They all sell their own version of themes. They either sell one theme or they sell multiple themes. The nice thing about some of these, too, and, and, and I touch on it, is They'll have like a theme for realtors, a theme for plumbers, a theme for lawyers that their developer deemed based off of the industry. These are the features we're looking for. I'm looking for certain things in certain places because this is what lawyer sites tend to look like. This is what plumber sites tend to look like. So you'll find a lot of sites. There, I love theme forums. Anybody here familiar with theme forums? Okay. I, I think it's great for people who are starting up and want to learn. I use it sometimes for design inspiration. I'll go there and look at sites. It's a great site. Average price is $49 to $59 for a theme with all those things I mentioned. There's so many sites out there, you have no idea that they're, 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 if you look at their top themes that are selling, I look at a theme, I'm like, that's from Theme Forest. I can tell right away, I see it, I'm like, that's a Theme Forest site. They didn't even change the CSS code that I did. Um, and they're an SEO agency or, or a web design agency. Um, and they're buying themes. But it's great because you'll get all those things. You can Google some of the most idiosyncratic uh, terms or industries, and there's a website for it. You'd be surprised. Um, that's the nice thing. There's themes for building galleries. If you have a radio show, if you have, if you're, uh, if you're in banking, right? So there's banking websites. Whatever it is, they may be a theme. Not there's a great universal theme that you can scale to it. Um, I am not making any money. I don't have an affiliate link, so you're not making. I'm not. But I do. Like it. I, I, it's one of the themes. Like Devil Monster's not bad, but I've never really been crazy about their themes. Elegant themes is basic, but has a nice panel. But again, you use what you like. You have a question, Doug? No. Um, you use what you like. You look and see what really clicks to you, what makes your site, your brand, your feel. And again, the premium things are very easy to use. Okay, domain, hosting. I have a theme, a template. What am I putting on that template? Content. Content is obviously good. There's a, there's a term in SEO, if anybody knows, it's called content is king. That's been our mantra for years that if you're doing search and optimization, content is king. But content can cost money, obviously. Uh, it is the most important part of your site. The important part about your site it tells people who you are. It informs them. It tells them what you do, how and where and when you do it. It tells search engines what you do. It helps build trust, familiarity, and connection. All those factors. Think anybody here think all that words on your page was that important? It is. Who you are. We are a business. We've been in 25 years. We've been in business 25 years. There's my trust. We're from Bucks County, there's familiarity. Not from Bucks County, there's my connection. It's tell me what you do. I, we do plumbing. We do plumbing in Feasterville, in Doylestown, in New Hope. Um, and guess what, the search engines know that I'm plumber in Bucks County. All those things, I gotta worry about that. But if I don't know what I'm doing, I can really mess my site up. 
I can also do my site an injustice or disjustice or disservice by not having good or the right content. But you have to be able to get the content. So how do you get it? Uh, who here loves writing content or writing in general? Writing notes? That's good. I, we are hiring writers. I need a um, I was an English major before I got my computer science degree. No, I love writing. When you've written some of the things that I've written and I have my people write, I love writing about, I love, I actually have a degree in culinary arts too. I didn't go into my background, it's just it's boring. Um, but I have a degree in culinary arts because I love the cook. That's one of the things I did at 30. I took a break from this and did it for three years. I love writing about food. I love writing about beer. I, like, I make my own beer. I'm a musician. I play guitar and drums. I like writing about that. I don't like writing about head lice removal, plumbing, uh, <laughs> roofing, uh, stuff like that. But we do. So unless you're really engaged and really like doing it, it's going to be hard to do. So, But if it's your business, you don't mind writing. Who understands your business better than your business? Uh, let's pick somebody. How about, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, realtor. Realtor, okay. I've never done realty. You want me to write your site? Even though I know what I'm doing. I don't... Oh, well, but you can at least give me a good outline. But you should start there. You should start writing it yourself at least a little bit to get an understanding of what you want. Start an outline. I know I need an About Us page. Or what, what are the big things about me? 25 years, experience, 24-7 service, all those things that you know of. Those are going to be those trust factors that I put into my content, make people want to come to me. Uh, don't want to do it yourself? Do you have a niece or nephew in college or son or daughter in college? Somebody that has a degree in English? Someone with a background? Post jobs on college boards? Uh, going back to the outsourcing sites? Uh, Upwork, scripted.com is actually a uh, specifically for writing. There's others, but that's one that I've seen and used. Uh, outsourcing sites, again, don't trust and don't cheap out on your writing. Don't trust it to just anybody because going back to the SEO, and I don't really touch on SEO because this is really about websites and web design, but SEO is the next involvement in, in stage seven that we're going to touch on. But having the wrong content or duplicate content, which everybody who knows SEO is a huge penalty. Google will hit you the hardest for one for duplicate content. But if you can't convey to your prospective customers what you do, you're not going to land those customers. If you anybody answers the phone, if they call you, you get to think of this this way. Your website is your brick and mortar. This is your counter or your office, your desk on the internet. I'm approaching you. Hi, I'm here for services. That's your salesperson. So if that can't convey what you do enough and effectively, you should have a website. It's just not going to do it. Comment on sure. that. Um, if you, like, like you said, nobody knows your business like you do. You might be the best plumber in town. Uh, you might be the best real estate agent in the county. But maybe you weren't an English major. Maybe you didn't write as well as you know your business. At the very least, hire a proofreader or an editor to go over it because people will judge you by your website. That's going to be their first impression of you. And if you make spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes, they're going to think you're a careless person. And if you're careless with your website, they'll think you're careless with your business also. 100%. Okay. I get it done too. And he's right. What we, I'll give you an idea of what we do as an agency. Is for a client who doesn't want to write their own content, I have them come into our office and we'll go to their office with our writer. And we'll have a half hour meeting with them. And they will interview, in essence, the, the uh, customer. Ask them questions. We know what certain questions to ask. Okay, going back to how long you've been in business, what services you do. If they say you do uh, cement or, let's say, tile roofing, what's tile roofing? Explain to me. And almost like we get them to sell us. Then we can turn around and put it in their words, but it's what people want to read. So that's why we say is when I say you're right, no one knows their business better, but sometimes you just can't write it. That's why you go back to the other options. Maybe, you, maybe you're going to cover this, but in my experience, the first thing you do before you do a website is talk to as many of your customers as you can and find out what they want and how they want it delivered, not what you want. I have it at the end with after your website having people proof it and look at it, but it's the truth. No, it's not It's not the proofing part. It's, no, no, it's what you're saying, but yeah, you, you can take it. It's the, whole, it's the structure that will be of value to them. Yeah. What he's saying and what, I'm, what we're trying to say is, if we design a website, if I design a personal website, I'm not showing it to my peers. I'm showing it to the banker, the roofer, the plumber, the, the guy that owns the gym, because those are customers. If I show it to another design professional, we're going to critique it differently. The feedback I want for a website is people that are actually customers. My mom and dad, who have, my dad still can't log on to the computer and ask me, 
hey, how come I can't Google this? And I say, well, because you're a dick. But that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a very true story. Um, What's Bing? That's where you hide no, your body. No, no. <laughs> he said um, there were like three or four no, no. things um, to build trust in the reality. What else? Uh, like what? Three or four things? Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a new I don't know if I named it, but there's numerous things. Um, you're, yeah. Like for bullets, you know. Like well, yeah, you, things. I actually got into my last presentation. I'll give you kind of a roundabout answer. So if you go to a website, you're looking for certain things. I'm going to use plumbing. Service businesses are always the best to use. And I saw, I'll say plumbing and roofers. Uh, if I see 24 seven service, if I see 25 years in business, if I see serving Bucks County, Philadelphia, if I see a better business uh, bit bureau logo, if I see some sort of certification board and all that stuff, all these things I know are probably a valid business and a valid suit. Not just some guy who decided I got a branch and open a toolbox and I'm going to be a plumber and come to your house and you know do more damage. So those factors all go into okay. I'm sitting in two feet of water in my basement because something blew up. I need. I'm on my cell phone. Okay. You're pick one word. It's Sunday at like five in the morning. You know. I know that there there's things there. Okay. These guys are definitely up here at night. They're open now. They're, they've been around. They're probably going to fit. If I say, oh, business one year, we're open nine to five. It's 4.55. He's not answering that phone. He's not coming to my house. And I don't know if he's going to fix it right. So you look at those trust factors on your site, that part of your content that you look, especially in the About Us page, you know, humanize the business. I always have like my business owners, you know, talk about their sons. I have a daughter myself. I have a five-year-old daughter and a three-year-old son. I talk about them because it, people can relate. We say, hey, I have a kid too, and he's a brat, and I hate him. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they talk about those stuff. He just went away to college, thank God, we just turned the room into a brewery. Uh, <laughs> so. What's that? Oh, I'm not, yeah, no, I got a fire. They're not moving out anytime soon. I'll be old before they do. How do you determine the balance between uh, written content and images? Versus what? Written content versus what? Images. Images. You know, visual graphics. Oh, uh, we'll get into images next. And you definitely need images. And actually, we'll just skip that to the next one. So content isn't just, um, obviously, it's not just words. Because if you just had a page with just words, people engage a different way. If I, if I ask 10 different people how they make their coffee, I could get 10 different answers. So if I make one cup of coffee for 10 different people, I have a pretty bad chance that everybody's going to hate it. I'll give you 20 different answers. There you go. Oh, that's right, Mr. Pisa. Okay, here's here. I love hazelnut coffee and hazelnut creamer, but people hate me because that's it's a coffee flavored beverage technically. Um, so we're going to talk to the video guy over there. He knows video, and I'm a huge proponent of video testimonials and video in general. We're starting our video blog this week. Video is my fa I've been doing video since the mid '90s. I when it was took years to just render titles. Now it's all I, I did a video in the back seat of a minivan the other day about about a year ago, and. Uh, for a funeral, which is crazy. He literally pulled up to the funeral with a video that I went to the Poconos on the drive back, created all the video that I shot, edited, and delivered the DVD right to the funeral home for the viewing. Um, it's amazing what you can do with video, but the same thing is, I'm gonna use a personal story for a client that I had about three years ago, it was a pain management doctor. Um, the lady that he brought in, she had back surgery, she had fallen off a horse during riding, was paralyzed for a while, had bad back, was just in bad shape. I myself, <laughs> back in 2001, had three back surgeries. I couldn't walk for the entirety of 2001. Um, I knew her story when she was talking. She was crying. I was behind the camera myself crying because I was like, I understood what she was saying. Excuse me. That was so powerful for her to do a testimonial for that doctor that once I went on his website, people who saw that video knew. It's not like I can have a written testimonial that says, great job, Jim Smith, great job, Bob Stevens. Like, hey, it's pablum at that point. Anybody can make up a 30 written testimony. If you have a video testimony or a photo of your, of your staff on your site, they see who you are, what you do, what you're about. They feed back those testimonials for real. You can't, I mean, you can see actor portrayals on all those infomercials that are on Sunday mornings. You know they're fake, but when you see somebody really truly giving passion about that business, try, try getting video testimonials for lice removal. No one wants to do it. Um, How long should you do for the testimonials, uh, they can be as short or as long as you want. Because engagements, what's your what's your average? Like two minutes is the longest per engagement. I I try to stay. We try to stay to a minute, really, yeah. if I can. Minutes the best. Um, sometimes thirty seconds. Two minutes is usually the top level that I think anybody would go. But a minute, if you can't say enough good things, sometimes we'll compile them if they're just like, I really had a great time, great job. And uh, sometimes people get superfluous and say a lot of words. You kind of have to edit that out. Just just a comment. Sure. I, I, 
I'm one of those people that enjoys writing. And one of the things that I find is that people don't realize you can speak that 150 words in one minute. Sure. And that's not a lot. And, and economizing, people say a lot more, write a lot more than they have to. Oh, yeah, always. Yeah, there's, there's, I probably speak 300 words a bit myself, but. Um, <laughs> is there a way to link video testimonials? If you have, like, more than one message? Oh, yeah, you can have, you can link them, you can embed them, I mean, you can, yeah. You can even, you can even search them. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, because you, yeah, as you name them, different for titles. If I want to build a doghouse, let's just say I want to build a doghouse, uh, and I don't have a dog, so why I'm doing that's a little questionable. But I can go to Google and Google how to build a doghouse, and I can read blueprints and look at diagrams and not know what the hell I'm doing, not what tool I'm using, how to cut it, or I can watch a video, and I can actually see the wood, the shape, the cut, the tools, the assembly, the final product, and visualize it. Okay, so it goes back to where content's so important. Somebody may be love reading, and they don't mind reading on that text. Someone might see an image and connect to that image. Someone might watch that video, a quick 30 second a minute um, about us video, where you do a couple shots of your staff, of your services, of you doing what you do, and that's actually what they connect to and they convert to. So they may not even read the text. They may not even read the text. You have this great video. Yeah, you know what? I like this. I'm calling them. I didn't even read what you said. But search engines is, and some people do, and some people look at the images, and some people love audio. They like a podcast. And they're like, okay, we'll do that. But it's accounting for however somebody could potentially get to your site and when they're on what they're doing. So you look at all these different options besides just content. Great content is more than just words. Um, but also getting an image, you know, like I said, creates a feel. Watch what you're doing with the images. Anybody up here? Uh, I have a story I told you. Uh, you just can't go to Google and grab an image. There's a thing called copyright. Anybody ever violate that before? Yeah. 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 Who has? <laughs> Anybody use Napster or Burn MP3s? Or record VCR off the TV. Um, I just had a client who called me, at, uh, built a website back in 2012. He called me threatening to sue the lady that I did the website for and myself because he got hit with a copyright infringement for a photo. Now, I've saved all the receipts for years for every website I've done, any photos that I've acquired, I knew it wasn't me. Um, and being that he had this, we built a website in this great thing called WordPress. Uh, and it was a blog post, and it had the published date in Google Cache as December 13th, 2015. It was at least two years after I touched that site. Um, so he got hit with a penalty. It had nothing to do with us. I went up being his niece, the doctor who was yelling and doing all the other. It was actually his niece who was blogging for him. He used a photo of the website. So in this case, it was $600. It wasn't like, I don't understand why it was so blown out of proportion when he still on the hook. Uh, the lawyer contacted his lawyer. So that's 600 bucks. On average, uh, I've seen them go for $5,000, $1,000, $1,500. So you can get sued. Um, anybody ever use Google Images to find images? Okay. Did you know you can drag any image into the search and actually search directly for that image too? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anybody ever see the show Catfish on MTV? Anybody who has it? That's what they do. You can drag an image into Google Image Search and it'll search for like images or the exact same image. Um, so if I'm owning an image and I go out there and they do that, these guys actually do this on purpose. They'll create an image, name it so it's, you know, something like realtor image number two. You'll say, oh, that's a great realtor image, I'll use it on my site. You download it, put it on your website, they do a scan on Google. There's also bots and other tools that they use, but they see, okay, here's this, here's this website, they use my image, there's a lawsuit, they send them out. So you gotta be really careful where you find images. Unless it's specified for public use, don't use it. If you're not sure, don't use it. There are sources for free or low-cost images. Uh, Photo Dune, which is part of the same network as the uh, Theme Forest. There's Flickr Creative Commons. Uh, or take them yourself. These sites, uh, there's too many sites in the list. Uh, I could put a ton of lists here, but just Google free images for website. Something to that effect. The way to do it is, if you go to Google and you look for images, you can do an advanced search and then specify the kind of permissions that are allowed. Yeah. Flickr has the same kind of thing. You go to the advanced search and then you specify just the kind you want. You basically want to get Creative Commons. Depends whether you have a for-profit or a non-profit. It's, it's, it's relatively easy to do. Correct. If you're over in Delta, you could also credit a photographer too. We don't. use about a thousand images a month on our site. Now, are you getting yours primarily from Google, or are you using uh, other sources? We use Flickr, Google. Yeah, I was gonna say Flickr, Creative Commons is great. YouTube, 
Um, a lot of times we'll pick up YouTube's and we include the video too. And uh, we edit it. We do it so much that we build a tool that makes it easier. That's what's great about videos. You can just embed it. You really don't need yeah. it unless they don't like you or they can phrase it out. You can Every much... YouTube video has an image associated with it. And if you use the video, then the image is there too. Great point. Great point. I have some of that, that actually. Sure. Yeah. I highly recommend if you're going to look for images, do not search for images because it could be that somebody uploaded it to a previous site and it still had some sort of copyright attached The only images that I would use would be Creative Commons Zero, which means that it's a almost a public domain image or search public domain image. What was that you looked for? Creative, Creative, Creative Commons Zero. Zero, which means that there is no um, no additional copyright attached to it. You can also have Creative Commons like 4.0 share alike, which basically means that you can use the image, but you have to give attribution to whoever actually was the photographer. You should always give attribution if you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if you had your own image from your website, my stuff that I've taken? Then you see yourself. Right. <laughs> now, how do I, I think I asked this question earlier, this, how do I protect that? Or how, I have to there are some laws. Uh, who's who's the internet lawyer here? Okay. I know there's there are some laws once the site's published that you're caught, once it's published that then you're that, that establishes your copyright. Um, so if it's published on your site, you can still put things in there like a watermark. Uh, you can also, you know, put it in like again an attribution in there as a photo by. It gets it you go, it gets crazy. I, a lot of times if I have a photo that's been taken for a client of theirs that we've taken, I will put their logo as a watermark on the photo. Um, and then just mark with any images to my uh, terms of service and the things like that where I'll put any images on the site. Those are our legal disclaimers you can put on your site, but then, you know, like I said, the terms of service. But like I answered you, that's top-down thinking. Bottom-up thinking is, how can I get my photo to get people to know me? Right. Yeah. So you say, I give permission, I give Creative Commons 2.0, share alike, top permission, you put that at the bottom, and, and that means that they have to, with attribution, so they create, they'll use your photo, then they'll put a link back to your site. That helps your SEO, that helps people to find you who are interested in you. So rather, because if so many people are afraid, they're going to take my content. For businesses, it's different though. Like if you're a blog, then that's great. But if you're a business, I'll go back to I don't think it's different. If he's got a oh, business, then he's, he wants other people to know about it. I have businesses that don't know If he's writing an know, article about. How, on his expertise and somebody uses it, and somebody I, else publishes it, that's a good if thing. If you're creating a product, you're selling a product, sure, let people sell it. But if you're doing a service and it's a picture of you on the roof selling it, and somebody else uses that on their site, they say, hey, you look like you're doing what you're doing. And it's your competitor using your photo. That's where I get to the place from. I don't, if it's a blogger or somebody that has a product, I'm selling a product, sure, you, know, you want that product over anywhere you can do. If they're selling a you know, backyard game, sure, blog about it, share my photo, that's it. But where I've run into it, where we get clients that get pissed, I mean, I've had them like call me furious, they use my photo, and you find out that they're hotlinking it or they've downloaded it, but it's them actually doing a treatment or doing a repair, and it's on a competitor site. I've had it where it's been in Africa, and they build a like site with the same images, and they're selling it. So, Again, if somebody's going to take stock photography and they're going to upload it and say, okay, I've taken this, I'm on a site, I'm selling it for five dollars a piece, why shouldn't you be rewarded if that's what you want to do? If you want to get it out as a product, that's perfect. I agree with that 100%. Just share the product, get your product out there. But most people are afraid when it's a service business, they're going to get taken, yeah. and it's the other way to think about it. Please take my stuff. Is <laughs> that people uh, that are other professionals? They asked me to use the, my writings and so forth. Sure. And I said, yeah, but then I thought about it. Well, you're taking my stuff, but you're getting the investment. And that's where you have to decide what right. you know what you're right. if you're if you're in his frame set then it's helping to make you more popular, get you more visits, by all means do it. Right. It's, you know, if you're out right. doing you know, part of SEO, there's outreach and guest blogging. You know, if you're going in there writing on somebody else's website, if you're doing quid pro quo, you're giving them content, but you're getting a link back. So you are weighing the pluses and minuses there, which we do a lot of guest blogging just to try to get that link back. You may include your own photo, a lot of the guest blogging. Uh, parameters will ask you to provide your own photos and your own bio, so you try to make sure you know you're giving that up, but you're getting some attenuation. True. We, we need to wrap up in about 10 minutes. I've really spoken up on that three. Yeah. <laughs> words. All right, ready? Um, so that's really it. It's just, just by work. Get a WordPress site and go. Okay. All, right. All right, so we have two more topics uh, we'll go through. I'll try to go through them fairly quick. Using plugins. Okay, familiar with plugins? Anybody here that doesn't have plugins? I'm, not, I'm sorry if I look at you right away, I just... Well, I'm the one with the I know, it wasn't on purpose. All right, so a plugin is um, 
basically something that you can put into your WordPress site to do a function that you may not know how to do natively via coding. Uh, an example, uh, Visual Composer, which goes to, where's it going? With the uh, we we Weebly and Wix. So Visual, Visual Composer offers the same, all these different things, like if you want a, a testimonial section, a review section, a slide, or a tab section, you literally just click add, boom, it structures it out, and it's drag and drop, and you can add, there's, there's all kinds of various elements you can add into it to do whatever you want. Change your heading, change your title, change the color, change this, change that. So it's a plugin that goes into your site that you upload that now makes your site literally drag and drop. Just drag and drop. So now if I don't have to code, I don't have to fill out forms, I don't have to do this, I can literally say, oh, I want this picture here, I want it here, I want it there. It's pretty great. I mean, did you say this? I did. Okay. It's one of the worst pieces of software you can use. It is, but if you're starting off and you don't know what you're doing, there's such. Uh, I know there's if a you're just starting off, please, instead of Visual Composer, look at Beaver Builder. There's even the free version. There's a premium version. It's cheap. And even the free builder. version there's is a, a thousand times better than that. Okay, that's your opinion. That's my rant. Okay, you're allowed to. I'll come with that. Again, I I use what I use. You use what you use. Photo gallery. So the plugins can do things like photo galleries, um, SEO. So there is a plugin called Yoast, which helps you with your SEO. It doesn't do your SEO, but it helps you set up the right parameters within yeah. your site for SEO, so it shows, okay, this is where I put my title, my description, my sitemap, other parameters, which is another discussion, SEO is a long conversation, but there's a plugin that helps you with that. Going for Rhonda's over here, security plugins, caching plugins that help cache your site to help it run faster, plugins for backing up your site if you don't know how to do all those things. Um, there's a plugin for something out there. Uh, there's a plugin that puts your hours on your website, that does scheduling if you want to if you're running a scheduling or a booking calendar you can put that on your website if you're if you have events and you're running an event you can have a free there's a free version of the plugin that uh, events manager or events calendar uh, that you can schedule events and schedule people to sign up for it they can put it in their calendar all for free there are premium options but a lot of these are free and they do a great job some examples of these plugins okay let's go back to this next one so if you rely only on plugins and something goes wrong you'll have no idea why so that's where there is a danger they can break. I had a simple working hours, which shows you your open hours pro, pro, uh, plugin from a couple years ago on a site that was just, what it was to show Monday, Friday, open, close, but I wrote it in a markup code, so it was good to use the plugin. It broke when WordPress updated, and then it broke the site. It actually messed up. It was displaying short code and everything else in the site, and it messed it up. And then it actually screwed up our login page. We couldn't even get it. So, yeah, working out, open hours plugin, excuse me. So I knew why. I knew to delete the program and not use it anymore, but um, if I don't know what I'm doing, I had to go in through FTP, go in through the server, delete the plugin folder, and I was able to get back in. Um, and so like I said, if WordPress updates and a plugin doesn't, it can break your site. So in moderation, using plugins, I've seen sites that have like 30 plugins, and from a coding standpoint, all those plugins have calls and JavaScripts in the header that slow your site down, and that's another statement for another day. So if you're gonna use plugins, Use a couple that, that make sense. Here's some that are good, not a great list. I mean, not a full list. Okay. Um, <laughs> so there's Yoast, which I say we're on one SEO. Everybody has a preference. I like Yoast. I mean, yes, you like all on one. Uh, W3 Total Cache. There are other caching programs. Cache is a, basically condenses your site, helps your site deliver faster for people, so it loads faster and better speed. Visual Composer or Beaver Builder or Jackalope Builder, I forget what that was. Um, Backup Buddy, which is for backing up. Contact Form 7 for helping get contact forms, which is what people to find you, and having to build a form. You can do some amazing forms that are easy to build with this, uh, and you can collect them in a database, and you can have reply messages, all for a free plugin, pretty cool. Um, there's also security plugins, which I didn't get into, so there are good plugins, and actually, he made a great point. You go and search it, see how many active installs there are, see how many stars there are, and that way you can guess which is a good plugin or not. So for those of you who don't know, the last one of our meetups was on uh, famous plugins. Okay. So we had uh, Susan we about, get, it will be no, we had about 30 or 40 plugins that were recommended by this group. Sure. And Susan has accepted the challenge of putting it all together in a nice document, which, oh, nice. We, which when she's finished, will distribute it to everybody. So it's a pretty damn good list. Would you say, Susan? Yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of it. And I'll put it in a searchable database. Yeah. So. Actually, that's good. That's really great information. Searchable database, like Contact Form 7? Sorry. Is there a possible number of plugins? What was the question? What was the question? I, I want to say one thing about Contact Form 7. 
It's a really good plugin. It's one of the most used plugins. It's been around for a long time, but it doesn't save the submissions into your database. There's you need another plugin to do that. Yep. There's a there's a there's a lot of different plugins. I actually use Gravity for plugins. It's called CFDB, Contact Form Database. Yeah, we have that on every site we go to. Right. As a backup. So you know that you're good. Exports to a website that they can just go to the URL and see it. It's great. And again, that's why you don't lose forms if you have a backup. Is there an optimal number of plugins you before you start? Having problems functionality versus say optimal number versus it's can you do that feature that it does without having to use a plugin is better than using the plugin. So going back to the hours plugin that we used, we use it because it was easy to manage. I had a schema markup, which you know, is for SEO purposes. Could I have coded that in sooner? Simpler? Yes, but we used the plugin at the time because with time constraints, the customer liked it. So in essence, I would rather have hand coded that option or done the and from the SEO standpoint, there's reasons to use Ghost. But if there's something I can do with coding versus using the plugin, I would rather code. But if there's something that the plugin does better or has easier functionality, like so the photo gallery. I can put up a photo gallery or whatever, use whatever. But if I know the client's gonna be doing most of the uploading of their photos, because like we do a lot of events, we're always taking photos, we want to be able to get them in and get it out, I'll use a plugin that does a photo gallery. It makes it much easier for them to manage. Less, less the train, less the management, they can do it themselves and have an instant result. Assuming you don't want to do coding. What's that? Assuming you don't want to do coding. I've seen, I'll tell you the truth, I've seen professional internet marketing agencies, their websites, that had 30 plus plugins on their site. Easily. I've seen, I've, yeah. Um, the, the rule do you need of thumb is as few as possible. Correct. So that's the best way I can answer that, as few as possible. The right amount that you need as few as possible. But don't just, you know, like, some people get the plugins and leave multiple plugins to do the same thing. They leave them all turned off but only use one. Um, so, yeah, that's the best answer. I'm not against them, but I, again, moderation's the best. We use plugins for certain things, mostly for, like, lead capture, the form plugin. We use Yoast, but um, we don't rely on the plugins we need. All right, in the quick five minutes here, am I ready to market? So. All our domain, we have our hosting, we have a great theme and template, we have great content. Is the world ready to see me? Do I have my makeup and my dress on? Am I looking good? Am I ready to go out on a date? Um, is, your ready, is your site ready to be seen and by who or whom? I don't know, proper. Is it whom or who? <laughs> That's why I don't write that many sites anymore. Um, so again, is your site finished? Did you proofread? Never launch a site that is not done. I cannot stress that enough. How many sites I've seen where people launch sites that when they go to a page it says coming soon? or we're working on this. And you know what that tells somebody? You're not ready for my business. Simple as that, and a lot of sites do it. Spend the time and finish your content. Even if you only get 150 words instead of the 350 or 500, get something. The worst thing you can put on that page is coming soon, or under construction, or whatever it is. People think it's cute to put the graphic on there, but guess what? Again, you're not ready for my business. Um, have you received feedback? Like I said before, pros, friends, customers. People who are really using your site. Don was saying that earlier. Who's using your site? Let them look at your site. What's the feedback? They may say, you know what, I don't like the phone number there, I don't like the color of this. That's who you listen to. And unfortunately, I mean this nicely too, is when we were talking about this earlier, we had a client that we wrote all that content for, I said he didn't want to use it. He then agreed to, and then about a week later, his wife came into our office and said, don't use that content. I don't want that content. I, want no, I just want pictures and no text. Because she was the one that made the judge. Now we're making it from a professional standpoint for the reasons being SEO and all that stuff. She's making it because she didn't like the way it aesthetically looked. But she's also a customer. We have to take some of the ones you, what she's saying in, into, into value, but some of it's not there. But again, if these are the people that are really using your site, don't send, send it to the pros to make sure it's code compliant, that it looks good, it looks, all the technical aspects. Send it to your friends, send it to your customers because they'll give you the real feeling. They're the ones that are gonna use it. You know, you paint your room the color you want, or you paint their room the color they want. Does the site reflect who you are? Are you happy with your site? And, you know, is, is your business, your logo blue, what your site's red? Does that make sense? Is it telling you about who you are as a business? What you tell about your business is telling the customer, telling your customers, or I should say, what you say about your business is how you get the customers you want. If you're off-putting, rude, short, whatever on your site, you may get customers like that. I will say this, one thing, one of the reasons I started my agency is because I want to work with the people I want to work with. There's good people and there's bad people. Everybody's had bad clients and everybody's had good clients. The ability to be able to work with the right people means you're gonna do the right things and you're gonna do the right work. You're gonna have a pleasure doing it. You're gonna love when people succeed. You're gonna share that passion. You're gonna build a relationship and you're gonna have continued business. So are you communicating that to the people you wanna reach? Are you looking for people that are just looking for price? And that's the people you want. If you look for people that are 
service and product and quality? Or are you communicating that? Have you done the basic SEO? Titles, meta descriptions, H1 tags, content, images, optimize this and that. There's a lot of things I can go into that we're not gonna get into, unfortunately, no time. But you should have some basic SEO principles on your site. Some implementations on there that are at least structured properly, have a title for your site, have a description for your site. If you've gone to Google, and the one of you that went to Bing today, um, you're, you're gonna see the title and the description below that, that comes from your metadata. So if you're not saying that in the search engine, and you're saying the wrong things, when somebody sees that, they're gonna skip over you. So you gotta have the basic parameters of SEO in there. And I think we'll touch on a little more next. Um, do you have Google Analytics and Webmaster tools set up? Things that are gonna communicate to Google that you have a site, what's on your site? Find out what traffic you have. Those are basic parts of SEO that you should have. You should have that on your site no matter what. You should have your site submitted through Webmaster Tools no matter what based off your site map. You have a site map. Do you have an idea of what pages are on your site? How to navigate your site? Is it optimized? Is the content optimized for search engines? I know I'm getting into a lot of things on the skip. Did you sign up for Google My Business? Do you have a map listing? So I have the site, but have I done some of these things to help push my site out there to get marketed through Google so people can find me? It's like setting up a beautiful restaurant, painting the outside, painting the walls, getting the food, setting the tables, and locking the door. Mobile friendly. I think I did it. Is your site mobile? Oops, sorry, TV. Uh, <laughs> is your site ready to be seen? Yes. Do you have social media profiles? Some people, we're talking about just having a Facebook page and not a website. Well, it's vice versa, too. You have a website, not a Facebook page. Are you commu social media, by essence, is social. Are you communicating with your clients? You're not making sales this day or tomorrow on social media. Social media is your long-term relationship, and I always say it's actually more about the customers you already have. You're a roofer. You see, hey, go like my website. Okay, you've done our services. You're like, you see our posts. We're doing our posting. Finally, like about six months later, I want them to come back, or I have a friend who needs it. I'm gonna recommend them. So social media is never your instant gratification. It's your long-term. So why would you rely so solely on that? But if you're trying to promote your business, you should be on social media, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, definitely LinkedIn if you're a business. You have uh, all the Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, uh, Grinder. No, what I forgot all those other ones. So. <laughs> Sorry, that was an Olympics joke. Right, everybody called that one. Uh, is your new website on your business materials? So now you have business cards. Uh, we were talking about this. this how, many, how many times I see a, a service truck with no website on it? They either don't have a website or they didn't think about it. But they're driving around in a billboard every day. It's got their logo, their name, and their phone number, but no website. Not many people are stopping to call. They may not remember the website, or may not remember the name of the business or the phone number, but the website. So you should be making sure it's in your business card, your email signature, invoices, signs, wherever it's at. You've done all that work. Show it off, promote it. Don't forget about promoting just online. You have your all offline promotion too. And yes, is your site mobile ready? Uh, let's see. I have one client that gets 85% of their traffic from mobile. 85%. That's all. That's all. Yeah. The average right now across the industry is about 55%. Probably a little higher now. But um, that's the average as of Google as of 2015. We're in 2016, so it's definitely higher. It's like I said, I have one client. My client average, my clients that we have, our average is about 65%, some at 85%. Um, some of the more service businesses, there's still a great deal of the uh, desktop, but um, mobile is where it's going. So as much as you consider all the way your site looks on here and how I'm designing it here, if it's not good here, it doesn't load real quick in that three second. Good. No, I was going to say, tying that together with themes, maybe you say a few words about a responsive theme. Sure. So like I said, if, uh, I'll use the theme for us, for example, since I'm plugging it. Um, all their themes, anything that's current for WordPress is responsive. It's going to be responsive. Well, most of them that are the quality ones, and if you go to the site, they have the top sellers. They're all going to have multiple responsive uh, styles. So they're going to have style for uh, your laptop, your tablet like this, your tablet like this, your phone like this, your phone like this. Uh, iPad, Android, uh, iPhone 5, iPhones, they have different views. So they will constrain to your user experience, which means I go here, I see things like the logo, the menu, the phone number right up top, the contents there. It's laid out for my experience because I don't have graphics and all this other crazy stuff here that I need to look through on a website. Because here, I want that screen filled up. Here, if I did the same thing, it's like, okay, where am I scrolling? Where am I moving to? Where's the damn phone number? You know? Um, so you want to make it easy to use, and that experience is unique. So if you get a good theme that is mobile responsive, and you can check these themes. So there's previews of these themes live. You can walk through these themes live and actually click a button and see what they look like. They're launched in the mobile uh, responsive view and see what it looks like there, drag and dropping. Um, but I can't stress that enough. The biggest part of my business that's coming in now with redesigns is making a site mobile ready. 
there's still so, and there's a penalty now with Google, if you don't know. There is actually a responsive penalty that if you don't have a mobile responsive site, you're getting a penalty, you're getting dinged because, and you'll see if you do a search, it'll say mobile friendly in the search results. So it's telling people, all right, if I'm searching this site on my phone, there's a, it's, this one's not mobile ready, I'm not gonna click on it. And then Google's gonna probably push my rankings down a little bit. Uh, so did you do everything? Are you proud of your site? Never stop working on your site. So yes, did you do everything that was there? It's always good to check. Are you happy with your site? Again, that's your, that's you. Your website's you on the internet. It's facing, it's a salesperson, it's an office, it's a receptionist, it's, a, it's everything on the line. Is that what you wanna show? Is everything ready to go when you're there? And yes, you are never stopping working on your site, especially if you're doing SEO. You're gonna make sure you're testing different things, you're adding blogs and content, making sure you have pages for all your services. You're promoting that site. Add, test, promote, repeat. Keep doing, keep going, keep going. Keep that site moving and live. You spent, if you spent money, you probably, if you're doing it on a shoestring, you've done a lot of sweat equity, you've worked hard. You don't stop when you're done. Cause then it's like I said, it's like dressing up to go out for the, to the prom and the limo never shows up and you stay in your bedroom. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna make sure that everybody, that, that's everybody can see that site. You're gonna get shirts with logos, you're gonna get a hat with a logo in the back. I mean, um, I've had hats, shirts, billboards, everything. You know, you never know. Um, so since we don't have much time, questions? We're dialed in. No question? Okay. Um, my question is going to come from the fact that I, I'm also a store mentor and I've had this issue come up with people who own retail stores in the area and it's uh, inevitably I'm saying you have a website and most of I get no. And I get the pushback, which are start out with, hey, it's you know, X number of dollars. Is there any empirical data that supports why retailer A with a website is gonna do better than retailer B in a given area? Or yeah, a lot of, like, when I did the research where? for this in the previous presentation where I mentioned the first time, I did a lot of, re there is research out there that I gathered a lot of the facts from. So do I have it on me now? But what I can say is if you just look up, you know, reasons why people don't build websites, there's gonna be a lot of sites because of that expense. The assumption is it is, there's people that assume a website's ten or fifteen thousand dollars for a basic website, because the truth is people do get that. You'd be surprised when I find out what some people they'll build. I, there's a site I would have built for a thousand dollars, and people have spent ten thousand dollars on it. Well, I, I guess my question is: Is there a place where I can get the, the data that says the return on your investment is X or some something? It's hard. To, it's hard to. I mean, that's a case by case basis. If you're in an industry, you can you can show. Because SEO, again, it's not like a tangible, so if I can't walk into your office and discuss your SEO with a box of it and lay it on a table. So you're looking at, okay, how many, can I say like, okay, I built a website, it cost me $1,000. By month two, I'll make back that money. By month three, I'll be profit. It's, that's a case by case basis. So I can't say that there's specific data on that, but if, I think going back to your, your initial question, is there data between how a business succeeds, makes money with a site versus not having a site? I'm sure there's data. I mean, I saw that in, in statistics on that. But I don't have that. I don't have that knowledge of, of, of details at all. I can't say. Who? Yeah. 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 I watch. I see a lot of webinars, and to answer your question, when you talk about return on investment, the new theory is return on objective. In other words, if you set the objective that you want 50 more sales in a month. Okay, and you're going to invest X number of dollars and you get 100 leads but only 25 sales. Was it because you didn't get enough leads or was it because you didn't convert enough leads? So you've got to look at the objective for doing it. Or was your objective unrealistic? Or, well, the point is, it's not investment is the objective. It's like any business owner that says, you know, I want to expand in two years, and you ask them, how, what do you want to expand by? I want to expand by $3 million. The true right. way to answer is how many customers you want to expand by, because right. you could get one client to spend $3 million, or you could get 10 clients to spend the equation of $3 million, whatever it is. So, it's, yeah, I guess now, it's are, are you you're saying. the objective you're setting yeah. out? The right. conversion. I mean, you can hire somebody to get you the leads, and they give you the leads, and if you suck at selling, exactly it's right. not the guy that created the website's fault. I think that's what it hurts. Great case of boy, we do call tracking on our sites so that the clients can listen back, especially the franchise uh, clients that we have. And the corporate office listen back to some of the calls, and I actually listened to some of them today, too, just because it's a new franchise. And 
The phone call came in, and the lady on the other side said, hello? This was a business they were calling. A brand new business that opened their doors a week and a half ago. And she's answering the phone, hello? They said, ah, is this uh, Blake Blake? And she was like, yeah. Do you have any appointments today? No. This was Sunday. And that was the way she answered the phone. So she's spending, this was a PPC campaign that she's running, but she's a brand new site, so SEO is still a little way off. So she's spending, that click was $7.47 for that click. And that person, about two minutes in, hung up the phone. That's true. So yes, can you get the leads and quantify them? Sure, do everything you can to get the leads. It's that person on it. That's why we use the call tracking, because then if it's, you have a CSR in-house, you're the manager, you can listen back to their calls and train them and say, listen. I did, I, I, today was Monday, I was called up on it, I said, listen, listen to these calls. And I sent them the MP3s and said she doesn't have, she's owning a franchise, spent the money to build and buy a franchise, and is answering the phone, hello. <laughs> so he wanted, and she's like, well, we didn't get any appointments. Yeah, this is why I, I listened to them back. She didn't get appointments because her phone, her phone demeanor was just terrible. So she wasted, uh, I'm not even going to the amount of money she wasted on clicks this month, this week, just in two days. But she got the traffic. Her SEO is going to be building. And if I don't, if I don't, you know, you don't look at the internal factors besides your website, because your website's only online. It, how you leverage it offline is also valuable too. But um, once you get that traffic, you build that site. If you're not doing right things, you're not answering the phone. You're a business owner. I'm a business owner. If my phone rings on Sunday, I answer it just in case. I don't, I don't let my clients wait because the internet's 24 seven. And but it's not magic. No, it's not. And that's the thing is, if, uh, if if my food on my table for my kids and my rent, my mortgage, and my business and all that stuff, you know, if that one call that I don't answer is a new client or if it's a client that's unhappy that cancels, that's my fault. So all the work that I've done prior to that is a waste. And I've lost all the money that you get to. So, you know, in essence, when it comes down to it, yeah, the website's only one part of everything you do. You know, your website shows your services. Your salespeople help service it. Your product manager, your customer service reps help keep your clients happy. Um, it's really, I, and everything I always say to my everybody, my staff and people I talk to is, it's relationship. Your website's building relationships with your customer. Everything you do to your customer in their face, to them face to face, is a relationship. You don't want one term, one time customers unless you're a one time business. You know, if you're, you know where I was going with that one. If you're a funeral director, it's usually one time business unless you're getting other people. Um, but you know, you want that customer to come back. The customer wants to come back. I, my favorite thing is I love to go to a restaurant where I'm there every day and they see me, they say, hey Drew, how are you doing? But I'm so picky with food, I always find something wrong and go to another place. But the thing is, people want that. They want that where they come and they know who you are, you know who they are. I've been a customer for 20 years. You have no problem getting those videos, that's my because they love your service, they're happy, they're gonna do it. They're gonna talk about you to everybody on Facebook. They're gonna, you know, again, going back to reviews in restaurants. If I have a bad meal here, I'm here now before I get the check giving them a bad review. I don't have to wait until I get home and start telling 10 people. I just told 300 of my followers that don't come to Virtual Jesus. They are not. They're good. I love you guys. <laughs> but, you know, that's the beauty of the internet is that you have to be more on point with your reviews and your service and, you know, your leads. Jump on top. I see it 10 times out of 10. Like, oh, I called and they didn't answer the phone or they didn't care that I was in there. And guess what? One bad review equals 100 people that don't come. I think I've talked enough. Any other questions? Were you? Get kicked out. Huh? Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I just talked to Robert, the manager, and I asked him, how long can we stay here? He said, you've already overstayed. You're welcome. So uh, I asked him for about 10 or 15 more minutes so we can wrap up. Uh, so, Drew, what did you learn tonight? Uh, I talk too much. You talk too much, okay. No, it's great to see a different, a different, um, oh, here you go. I'm going to sing Billy Joel's Piano Man. Oh, is that yeah. um, no, I, it's great to, I love talking, I, again, I've been doing this a long time, I think the best part of my job isn't doing it, it's talking about it, just to see people learning different things. I love hearing other points of view. I, again, I, I love to hear about visual composers, I joke about it, but it's great to hear somebody else's side of it, because it's good to, good to keep an eye out for something else. You know, somebody else's point of view is a good way to, to check what you're doing, if, if what you're doing is the best. Never, everything I recommend is a recommendation, but it's not gospel. It's not in stone. You find what works best for you. Some people have a Honda, some people have a Ford, some people have a Cadillac. Everybody's got their own taste. So it's great to see people who are in basic stages, beginning stages, or advanced stages, who are in similar fields and see how they all mesh together. Um, and really, just like, I think we're all working together here just to see see how we learn more. I mean, that's the best part. I thank you guys, actually. It's my pleasure. <laughs>